Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining uh, Camberley Chess Club's weekly meeting, which, um, as was mentioned earlier, has been going on for nearly a year. We started end of March when lockdown happened uh, for us in the UK. And other than Christmas and New Year, a couple of weeks off, we've actually met every single Tuesday evening. So we've had a range of talks on openings, end games, puzzles, uh, top player uh, games, consultation matches with other clubs, and like this evening, special events with top chess professionals. So uh, really, it's a case of um, everybody's invited, but we do ask, uh, come along for a few meetings. If you enjoy it and you want to keep going, then please, to help cover our admin costs and continue to develop the content and particularly to get uh, top chess professionals invited along we ask you to sign up to our online annual membership which is only 10 pounds only 10 pounds that's a bargain yeah well you can pay more paul obviously um, it's 10 pounds more than my fee this evening that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> and i might add that the, the Camberley chess club bank account details are in the chat and the easiest way to pay the 10 pounds is by, is by bank transfer with your name please so if you very you, good be much appreciated yeah it's in the chat and it's obviously on the website as well if you click on membership you'll see the same details there so please do help us with uh, getting uh, content. So today, uh, as mentioned, we have a top chess professional whose fee will be discussed later offline. Um, and uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew Martin, international master, respected author, YouTube channel owner, uh, I would like to hand over to you, Andrew. Oh, it's up for sale, Martin, if you want to buy it, buy my channel, you're very welcome. <laughs> right, it's over to me. Okay, wonderful. Well, good evening, everybody. And let me, first of all, kick off by sharing my screen. Anyway, we're going to discuss gambits. Uh, the, the, the actual title of this session should have been uh, Which Gambits Are Sound? Instead, John renamed it Gambit to Victory, which puts me on the spot because I've got a number of games where gambits come crashing down. But never mind. Uh, I'm, sure it'll, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be entertaining as we go along. So first of all, because I know there's some pretty strong players out there, I'm not going to linger too much on this, but um, just a summary of, first of all, what one might expect if, if one gambits in the open. What form does compensation take? Nice, simple list. What are you expecting? Well, you're expecting a gain in time. You're expecting some sort of advantage in position, or it may be an advantage in peace activity, or it might be a lead in development. You might enjoy a structural advantage. You might enjoy more space. These are the usual ways that a gambiteer obtains compensation. The final point is that not everybody is suited to gambit play, basically because there is a distinct element of risk as a sacrifice of material is involved. A lot of players just like to play very safely. So you'll just have to decide whether gambits are for you um, as we go through the evening now let us kick off with one of the more interesting gambits which i think is 100 percent sound and i have to share my screen in order for you to see it that would be helpful yeah here we are right okay you'd help if i deleted that move right can everybody see the screen okay Yes, can you? Wonderful. Okay, so the first gambit I want to talk about is the Benko gambit, which um, is generally thought to be 100% sound. Uh, it's being played frequently at all levels still, at the highest level. And it's a fantastic and interesting opener. Um, it's named Benko gambit after um, Pal Benko, um, Grandmaster. And so to kick off with, I'm going to show you one of his thematic wins in this opening, because um, back when he more or less invented it in the 1970s, most players wouldn't think twice about accepting the gambit. Black plays B5, this is the gambit. And now white takes the pawn. And after A6, white takes again. Of course, these days, we know that this is actually uh, going to lead to a position which is quite easy to play for black. So a lot of white players these days decline the gambit. And in the next game, 
we're going to go through a very modern game from 2021, even, where White wins by declining the gambit. But um, in those days, as I say, there was no theory on it. They were just making it up. It was more or less unknown. Um, in fact, Bronstein had played something similar in 1950s. But um, it was Benko who developed and refined the idea. Now, um, can anybody explain to me what compensation Black is going to get for his pawn before we go on? Who would like to have a go at explaining? I'm sure most people know this, but never mind. Let's give it a try. I would guess, if you asked me to guess, you'd guess a uh, guess, gain in space. A gain in space. Um well, not totally sure about that. He gets a lot of pressure down the B file and the A file. And the A file. Mm. Yeah, there could be some pressure on these files. That's He's for sure. His pieces more quickly. Yeah, he gets a very straightforward development plan, which can more or less be played against virtually anything that White does in the Benko Gambit accepted. Anything else? His bishop becomes quite strong. The Fianchetto bishop becomes quite strong. What, you think Black's planning to play g6 and bishop g7? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have thought so. And you'd be right. That can be a very strong piece. And White's queenside can come under severe pressure. But, you know, it takes a certain cast of mind to understand that because um, at the moment it doesn't look as though Black has got anything if White just develops the pieces. So this guy, Stephen Gordon, who Benko's playing in this game, this was played in Las Vegas in the National Open 1976. He's obviously not the English Stephen Gordon. I'm not even sure he was born then, but uh, it's his American namesake. Anyway, he plays the Fianchetto variation, which is, again, very popular these days. Um, but I think they actually play it with, with some weird moves these days. Uh, something like that. I think that's the modern way to play this variation. Um, anyway, as I say, that is another story. In this game, White just trots down what he thinks is a main line. And Black gets a whole series of free moves. He basically gets to develop his pieces in this uh, fashion. Very easy to understand. Fianchello Bishop, Knight to D7. And then he brings his major pieces to the open files on the queen side. Well, half open files, in fact. So, first of all, a lot of advantages in this uh, setup for Black because you get so many free moves. Now it's a question of what you do with them. And I think White's next move is probably a mistake. Although, as I say, it was hard to appreciate that at the time. I mean, why might E4 be a mistake? It looks the most natural move in the world, doesn't it? Yeah. However, it's probably a positional mistake in this position. Does anybody know why or could hazard a guess as to why? Knight G4. Uh, uh, yes, but what is your plan? Uh, to come into e5. And then? Well, maybe maybe c4. d3. Yeah, yeah. Might go. these two squares are quite uh, vulnerable once you could, play e4. Could you play c4 and knight d3? Well, you can do. That's, that's a possibility. Then, of course, you'd be blocking your bishop, wouldn't you? Yeah. But nevertheless... Um, I mean, I think if White wants to play e4, we should probably preface it by playing h3 so as to not allow knight g4. In actual fact, in the Benko Gambit, exchanging off the knights is also a positional uh, aim for Black. Because um, if you get rid of this knight, that's covering the long diagonal and you've got easier access to, uh, to b2. If you get rid of this knight, then as Colin said, you might often find yourself conquering these light squares at the centre. And... Um, Whereas Black's bishop will be very active, White's bishops will be very passive. So I think e4 is a mistake, and Benko zeroes in on that mistake by bringing the knight to e5. The knights are traded, and now there's a severe threat of bishop d3. So White has to play rook, B, rook d1, queen to b4. Okay, so this is kind of like a dream position from Benko Gambit for Black, because you've got all the pressure, Okay, you're a pawn down. But White's position is very, very passive. And I actually think if it's black to move, black is... Well, let's see. Let's see if you get this idea. Let's say White plays this move, right? I don't know why he would, but let's say he does. Can you see how black wins material? Uh, 
Fantasy Four, nineteen eighty-three. Four. Pardon me. Um. Knight C four, French Bishop C three. Uh, well, I didn't think about that, but I don't think that's the move I was thinking of. Play Bishop D three, and then when it's all clocked off, you can take on C three because the uh, yeah. th that is a killer, actually, isn't it? Uh, because if he takes, takes now, what is he going to do? If he takes it, we take this. And white is suddenly completely busted. And if he leaves it there, well, of course, you're the exchange down. And if he leaves the bishop there, well, you're going to lose the exchange anyway. So this helps to explain why it's next move. But it's not a comfortable move at all. Actually, somebody's got their um, audio on with a sort of whirring noise going on in the background. Oh, brilliant. I don't know who that was, but anyway, um, doesn't matter. So bishop f1. OK, so black's happy to trade. One of the interesting things about the Benko is that end games tend to favour black, even when a pawn down, because they tend to be major piece end games where actually activity is more important than the pawn. And so you often get a scenario where black is actually happy to trade pieces despite being a pawn down, uh, which is, again, a little bit paradoxical. Now, white played rook to d3. I mean, already, I think, as you can see, it's really a question of how black is going to break in because he's already threatening to play bishop takes knight. And all of black's pieces are super active and, and none of white's pieces are active at all. So this would be a, a sort of dream Benko gambit. And one which makes the opening very attractive to play, as long as white accepts the gambit. You get to get into this sort of position where you've got to be very accurate. At club level, it's a fantastic weapon, as long as they take the gambit because you get an active position and uh, the club players actually hate uh, defending. So rook to d3, and now another interesting move here. Benko took the knight. Very unstereotyped. Because you wouldn't think normally about surrendering that really strong bishop. Anyway, uh, white is now in a spot of bother. He took with the queen. Um, can't take with the pawn, of course, it's pinned. What would happen if he had taken with the rook? Can anybody see? Knight a3. Uh, that, I think, as far as I can see, is deadly, isn't it? That's curtains. Unless anybody can see something here, which I've missed, I, I really don't see what you could do. So he takes with the queen. And now, black takes on a2. And again, another thing in the Benko Gambit, if white loses his extra pawn on the queen side, you often find that, you know, the other pawn drops as well. So what we're left with here is white fighting for his life in a major piece end game. Level on pawns, but certainly not level in position. Because uh, look at the difference between the activity of the pieces. Now the question is, can white hold this? Well, I don't think he can, because black's got a direct threat, hasn't he? What is the direct threat? C4. Yeah, C4. C4, isn't it? C4. Very difficult to stop. Double pin on the pawn. Um, let's have a look at King E2. Can he play this move? Uh, no, he can't because I could go C4 anyway. And you can't take the pawn because of Rook A2 check, winning a Rook. So why is it desperate straights, really? Eh? He tried protecting his Rook. C4, King E2, but then basically... Benko just mopped up, played it extremely accurately. Nothing that uh, nothing that White can do here. Just got to sit and watch Black play. And when the rook moves, then he took. And basically, Black finished off nicely. So that was a game from not the inventor of the opening exactly, but the man whose the opening bears his, bears his name. And it was a tremendous thematic victory. Well, now this is where you are going to come in because we're going to stop the share of that game. And now we're going to go into, uh, if I get the game right, where are we? This one, yeah. Right, so this is a game uh, you probably won't have seen. It's from the 
Pan American Intercollegiate Rapid Tournament played in 2021 between Cameron Wheeler and Hoff Hannes Gabuzian. And I feel myself very fortunate to be able to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, white players got totally sick of losing to the Benko Gambit like that because it wasn't just that game. It was hundreds of games that went in exactly the same way. You know, White got into a passive position, couldn't maintain his extra pawn, and then just Black strolled to victory. So there are a lot of ways to decline the Benko Gambit, which have very much come into fashion. I would say probably these days, the Benko is declined more often than it's accepted. And there are various ways to decline the Gambit. For instance, you might take one of the pawns and not take the other. In this particular game, White played B6. Anybody play that here? I know there are uh, certain people who do play the queen's pawn in the audience. Does anybody play b6? No. Well, it's certainly one move. Another move, of course, is e3. That's quite a variation, but not without uh, not without danger. There's also knight to c3 here. There's also f3. All sorts of possibilities for white, and um, quite interesting ones at that. So basically what this means is if you play the Benko Gambit, you can't expect that White's going to take it. You know, you'll be lucky if he does because there are so many moves at White's disposal. And this is one of the more interesting ones, B6. And um, I think Alexis Shearoff is the grandmaster with whom this, uh, this variation is most associated. Anyway, we're going to see both players trotting out some theory, which you may or may not know. Uh, the point of B6 is obviously Black's got no problem taking the pawn back. But at the same time, White has got no problem developing his pieces. Now, Black decides to play his moves in a funny order here. White just expands in the centre. The position of pawn on a6 is not ideal for Black, really. Because you're not getting your usual gambit compensation. You do get to get the pawn back. You've got to take it now, because White's going to play a5 if you don't. So he takes it. a5 by Black. Queen to b4. This is all, I think, well-known theory. Well known to both players anyway. Queen to b7. Good. And this is where you come in. Right. OK. So we're going to have a little quiz. And uh, let's see who comes out on top. We're going to try and guess White's next move in this particular position and at various interesting points in the game. So what you should do is configure your chat to only me. And then put your move in the chat when you are ready. What would you do if you were white in this position? Let's see if you can play as well as the guy with the white pieces here. He really did play well, actually. What would you do if you were white? See, already it's not totally straightforward. I mean, in the other game, it was straightforward to play for black. This position is not quite as straightforward at all. Um, it's got a little bit of organisation to do. So let's jot down a move in the chat when you're ready. We'll spend a few minutes on it. It's not an easy position. I think I know what I would have played here, and it was not actually the move that the guy chose himself with uh, with White in the game. So um, we shall see. Right. Uh, somebody like a bit more time, or is that okay? A little bit more time. What did White play? Right, let's have a look. Okay. Well, 
Right, so we've got a, a huge selection of moves. So we've got several people playing bishop to c4. We've got a bishop to d3. We've got an illegal move, which is, of course, very handy. We've got a knight d2. Colin Purden says, yeah, do. Are you, are you taking your move back? You can unmute yourself. I, I, now. My, my first suggestion was rook a3. I, I was taking that back in favour of knight d2. You'll play knight d2 instead? Yes, if that's, if that's allowed. Of course, that's perfectly all right. <laughs> We're reasonable people here. <laughs> the fact the prizes are so valuable, we could afford to be generous. Uh, Steve Harley's played h3. Martin Woolman's gone for gold with e5. Well, I suppose it is a gambit session. And Joshua has played queen to d3. So we've got a wide range of moves. One of which was played in the game. Now, Martin. Martin, what, what is that move? What if I remove it? Just, just unmuting myself. You may. What is that move? Yeah, I'm going to take it. Yeah, I thought you might. Well, there's various why, why, plans. Why did you play it then? Well, there's various plans, obviously. Um... I want to get my knight over to c6, which doesn't happen at the moment, but it, it might do in the future. Um, you if need I a build pretty big place. parachute to get it in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could just put some pressure on there now, maybe, I don't know, queen e2 or something. I see. Well, it's a speculative move, isn't it? You, that's the move you would play in a game, do you think? Your, your own game? If, if, if I didn't have much time, I might do, yeah. Just to stir things up. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, fair enough. So let's go back. Now, why is that chat turning off? Right, okay. Uh, bishop c4. Now, why there as opposed to other squares? Who played that move? Steve Harley's played uh, two moves. I've played two moves. That This was my first move, and I kind of... But you can't play to replace it with a, I know that, but... I hate to say I, that, but... But the reason I played Bishop, <laughs> Bishop G4 was thinking, after Castles and Rook E1, I'm, I'm, it's a preparing move for E5. So you are actually sticking with that rather than H3? No, I still prefer H3, but I'm explaining why I played Bishop C4 in the first place. Okay, well, you were joined by Richard Brown uh, by playing, and Mark Payne. Uh, they also chose bishop c4, but they didn't suddenly do a body swerve and go to h3. Never oh. mind, back we go. Uh, bishop to d3 looks like a solid move, doesn't it? I suppose black might play this move to get to that and bring the knight to e5. Nothing wrong with it, of course. Um, let's take the move back. Uh, what else did we have? We had h3. Simply to prevent knight g4. Yes, just taking away knight g4. Very sensible. Um, and a strange move, queen to d3. What? Why queen to d3, actually? Has Joshua played that? Yeah, um, partly because uh, it allows you to... Uh, it's probably wrong, but we... We don't really have anything sort of in an attacking frame of mind. And it develops a piece. It gets your queen sort of active, if you will. And you've still got other development opportunities for the bishop, the white bishop on F1 and the black bishop on C1. So I thought it's, it's a good developing move. Okay. And it covers both knights should we need to um, based on the gambit. Might be a little bit of a target for Black's Knights, though. Maybe he plays here, I don't know. And yeah. then puts it on e5. I don't know. It's not so clear because um, not because White can pretend that, you know, he's coming over for the king's side attack. I mean, I suppose Black's got a castle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. F4, always, you know, it's controversial F4. It gains a tempo, but it's terribly loose. Mm. My impression is this is okay for Black because White's lagging in development. But maybe, maybe you know, Black... Black's not better. It's just a very complicated position. Okay, queen to d3. Fair enough. Uh, what else have we got? Have we got anything else? I think we've covered everything. Oh, knight to d2. Sorry, that's wrong. Excuse me. Knight to d2. 
Uh, well, okay. So the motivation behind that is to put the knight on c4. Is that correct? Yeah. In typical uh, Benoni style. Well, it's less side castle. Are you going to play knight c4 straight away or maybe bishop to e2 or something like that? Probably bishop e2 first. Bishop e2, yeah. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? And you see, the thing is that this is a totally different type of position to the actual Benko Gambit accepted where the second pawn is taken because black is feeling a little bit congested. Um, not even sure what he should play. Maybe rook to b8. And then white will castle. And then black probably just gets on with redirecting the knight. I mean, this is what they do in this type of position. Just put the knight up on b5 and... Uh, and uh, try and hold things together. Hard to judge, hard to judge. It's just a different, complicated game. Now we come back to the game itself. What did White play? He played H3 for the full 25 points. Those people who played H3 should feel very pleased with themselves. That's Steve Harley, second... Uh, second bite. Second bite. Five and a half Perry. for the second bite, is it? I can't, we can't allow any second bites in future. Go, your first move is the one you've played. Okay. <laughs> and Paul Sloan played that move. Paul, why did you do that? Is he there? He's probably gone for coffee break. Oh, he's there. He's on mute. Oh. That's very on mute, Why Paul. did you play that, Paul? You're on mute. I don't like the knight, the black knight coming into e5. Oh, knight g4 to e5. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, there you go. It makes a lot of sense. Now, other moves are, uh, of course, reasonable. Knight d2 gets 15 points. That's a perfectly good move. Bishop c4, 10. Bishop d3, 10. Um, Mark Taylor played rook b3 initially, but then that's that's not correct, is it? What what did, what did you mean? Rook a3, coming, coming to b3, possibly bishop c4. Yeah, okay, I... Yeah, okay, rook a3, 10 points for that. Uh, e5 looks looks and is speculative. Well, I'll give you a speculative five points for that. Uh, but h3 is just a good, good move in this case. It takes away some of Black's active opportunities. Uh, all right, so if you disagree with my scoring, you just say so, and we'll have a little debate about it, because I'm, I, I'm open to uh, suggestions. So Black Castle... White brought his bishop out to c4. So there we are. And maybe, who knows, he's leading up to the move e5. Knight e8, as described. Black's trying to stop e5. And he's bringing his knight around to b5, which is actually quite a good square to cover all the uh, the gaps. White played rook a3. So we were getting the plans right. Knight e5. Knight takes knight. And now, perhaps slightly surprisingly, Black took with the pawn. Which, to me, is an ugly move. But as the guys graded 25-57, <laughs> there's, there's kind of... <laughs> it's difficult to criticise too, uh, too heavily, but that does look a hideous move. The question is, what was he afraid of after Bishop takes? Was it simply rook b3? Or what's the idea? I don't don't see it. Is it rook b3? Is he afraid of bishop h6 at some point? Is he afraid of f4? Hard to say. I mean, okay, he took with a pawn. Right, so it's one of those situations in a game where basically you, you've just been surprised unless somebody was expecting that move. Well, was he, did he just like the idea of putting the knight on d6? Yes. Well, probably, yes, probably that's the idea. But, of course, it does leave the C-pawn uh, horribly weak, doesn't it? Mm. So, anyway, uh, you've just been surprised. Now it's time to take a little time out and, um, and uh, find a move. <clears throat> you can't help but feel White's position's improved a bit over the last <laughs> move or so. I... OK, it was a rapid game, but never mind. Or did white play next?
the more I look at that move, the more positionally it looks horrible. I suppose Black's going to play knight d6 and f5, isn't he? Something like that. Try and get active. Castle. Of course, White could castle if you wanted to, if that's what you think. Well, okay, um, let's jot down a move, shall we? See what we come up with. What would you play if you were white? Quite a few um, possibilities, I would say. Oops, excuse me. Trying to find the chat is not always easy. It is. <clears throat> well, have a go anyway. Just jot down your move. Let's see if you can come up with uh, a good move here. I'm sure there are quite a few good moves. Okay, let's have a look. Open it up a bit. Anybody like a bit more time? Right, okay, so we have uh, a wide choice once again. John Upham, did you go for Queen C2 here or on the last move? Looking at the timings, it's this move, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, here I, I suggest Queen C2. Bishop B3. He said, I went for Queen C2 up here, or is that the uh, last move? That was the previous move. Right, okay, fine. So we've got a Bishop G5. We've no, got bishop, a... Bishop E3. Yeah, that's fine. I've got a Bishop E3. I've got D6s. I've got a Knight A4. A Rook B3. Stephen Carr. D6, are you playing D6? I can't actually see him on the screen. Is, is that actually your move? Yes. D6, D6. Knight D5 doesn't work after that. No, I but, see. Right. Okie dokie. But... Thank you. Yeah, perfect. And John has played Bishop E3. And Colin's played Queen E2. Is that right? And Harry has gone for it with F4. Not a single person castled. That's incredible. Perhaps the, John, can we have a session on casting next week? That would be a good idea for some of these guys. You know, get your king's safety. It's incredible, not a single person in this group cast on. I can't believe that. You think at least one person. Castling for victory. Eh? Castling for victory. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's usually the case, isn't it? Okay, we've obviously got a group of uh, chess pirates here who like keeping their king in the middle. So let's just see some of these moves. Well, there can't be much wrong with Rook B3. Um, in fact, that's played in the game uh, quite shortly. Um, okay, Queen C7. I think that, that's what I would play if I were black. Now, who quite a few people played that move. Would anybody like to state what they would do against that? Obviously, I'm attacking the pawn on a5. Rook b6. Rook b6, yes, okay. And then either rook b8 or knight d6. I think I'm going to keep attacking things. I think this is probably the reason he didn't do it. Do it. Um. You can't actually attack the queen with rook c6, which is quite annoying because he takes on a5. And if you can't, he's attacking your bishop. Well, you really want to retreat this guy? Might have to. And then maybe something like that. 
Uh, I mean, what, what are you going to play here? This is the problem. It's stuck your rookie, but... Queen B3? Yeah. Queen B3. Well, I've probably got to take it now. Uh, probably the pawn. Probably the pawn, yes. Or maybe the pawn. How do we evaluate this position? Probably is slightly better for white. Maybe bishop there. Yeah, looks okay. Looks okay. Did I misplay that somewhere? The only way place was here. I mean, I could have gone here, I guess. Can I get away with that? Oh, well, I think <coughs> I should probably... Having seen the last variation, I think I've got to try that. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think I think Black is getting into the game here. But, of course, it's a, it's a possibility. Now, let's have a look at the other moves. Um, White did not castle in the game, would be pleased to know. Uh, so, he shared your opinion. D6. I think that was played in the game. That gets 25 points. Congratulations if you played that move. Well done. What? Don't like that? No, I see it. Well, let's allocate the other points first before we actually go, go into that move. Uh, queen e2 and queen c2 get 10. Ste steady moves. Ken Coates has come out with casting after the after the bell. <laughs> <laughs> I was having my tea. <laughs> hey? I had my tea and I was on mute anyway. All right, I'll give you I'll give you a 15 points, Ken, for, for casting. How about that? It's very Too generous. generous. No, it's extremely generous. Yeah. Bishop G5. Wow. Okay. Bishop G5. The game's going to get sharp here. The game is going to get sharp. Now, if I take on B2, that looks very bad somehow because of something like this. And then I might not be long for this world. <laughs> well, in fact, I've just dropped off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's forget about that. But I think H6 probably. Oh, not H5. That'd be too much like Simon Williams. Let's play that move. Now, what does he do? Maybe Rook B3. I don't know. No, then Queen C7. Well, Bishop G5 is possible. And I think Black will probably get away with H6 there. Uh, 10 points for that. This chat is annoying. Have I missed anybody out before we look at D6? Oh, Bishop E3. Three. Bishop E3. Well, that sets a little trap, doesn't it? Again, let's take that move back. Bishop E3. Once again, he's enticing Black to take on B2. And then the Queen is lost. And it's sitting C5. Well, I think I've got to first of all play that. Take the opportunity to gain a move. And now I'm not sure what you do. Probably retreat to E2. Huh? I still can't take that pawn, I don't think. Huh. However, I think, I think black is yeah. black is okay. Black is okay. Gonna get F5 in. Probably got to cast at some point. But okay. not take four now. When now? No, he's still not casting. Oh, really well, the queen takes four check. Yeah. 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 Well, that might not matter. It might not matter, but I think the I think the reason that White doesn't play any of these possibilities is that he's got d6 in the position. Yeah. Which is what was played. Now, would somebody like to let's have a look who played d6? We've got quite a few people who played d6. Tony Williams, would you like to explain that possibility to us, please? You're, you're muted. You're muted right now. You'll need to unmute yourself. I've unmuted. Right. There's obviously the first tactical threat of playing uh, bishop d5. Um, so uh, if you know, if black declines and plays e6, then his yeah you know, bishop's bishop's horrible, and that sort of pawn on d6 has become a, a sort of a thorn in in, uh, in black's side. That's what uh, Stephen mentioned actually. Um, uh, this possibility. Um, does anybody see what White would do after that? So I can see he can get Black completely tied up. 
Um, I, I was thinking of rook b3 followed by rook b6. Well, that's right. Now, what is he, what is black going to play on that? He's getting throttled here. If you attack the pawn, come in, yes? Mm. Right, now, what's your next move? I presume that the main threat is something like knight a4, is it? Pick up this pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that move just highlights all the drawbacks of taking with the pawn on e5. Anybody see anything here? It's just a horrible position for black. So I think that's mainly the reason he can't play e6. So the question is, what did black do? Well, he played pawn takes pawn. Sacrificing the exchange. And so we got a position where white actually captured the exchange. And then white played, uh, then white played rook b3. We'll keep going because it's quite an interesting position. Now, let's count the pieces here. Um, Black has got a bishop and a pawn for the exchange. And I think if his pawn was somewhere like that, I think it might be okay. But with the pawn here, I don't trust this for black at all. Even though he's able to gain a move, in comes the rook. F5, starting to get a bit interesting now. This is obviously the position black saw. I mean, in a rapid game, we, you don't have much time to think. You can, you can punt this and, and, and hope that, uh, you know, hope that white's, gonna, white's going to misplay it because it's not totally easy, is it? Black's very active. Anyway, white played the safe and solid queen e2. Black played c4. Castles, finally. <laughs> and black played f4. Uh, okay, now we go back to you for white's next move. <laughs> so after d6, events have taken their course. I mean, you know, black, black has drummed up what compensation he could muster, really. I mean, that, that, that's basically all you can say. Um, generally, bishops are not good looking at their own pawns. And, and Black's got two bishops looking at, you know, his own pawn chain. So, again, that gives you the feeling that Black probably hasn't got enough here if White plays properly. White played very well, though, in this game, actually, to, uh, to win. But let's see what happens now. F3. You could put it in the chat. Where's Philip Ware? Philip Ware, if you could configure your chat to, and Harry Duff, you're broadcasting to everybody. You're broadcasting your move to the whole uh, group. Um, and Sandy. Maybe you want them to see your move. Is that right? <laughs> did I allocate any points for Rook B3 last time? I think I did. Call it 15, 10, 10, we'll call it 10. Right, please make your move. I think a lot of people have actually made their move. Now then. Yeah, don't play Rook B3 now. Stephen's giving very good advice. Well, you can play rook b3 if you want to lose your entire score, but that's absolutely fine by me. Okay, here we go. The vast majority of people have played f3. Uh, a few people have played queen f3. Ken has boldly played rook to d1. And Paul Sloan. 
And I think that's it, isn't it, more or less? Um, Richard Brown's played knight to d5. I play rook d1 too. You're playing rook d1, are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Well, let's look at it first. Well, if I was blacky, it wouldn't take me very long to play that. So, uh, what next? I mean, obviously, that's what black is, is <laughs> trying to get in, you know, desperately. Do you think white should allow black to play that? Yeah, I, I, white gets compensation after g takes f, bishop takes h3, white's got queen takes c4, check. Yeah, well, I, I guess in a rapid play game, that's the least of your worries. But on the other hand, White might be winning after Queen C6. Although maybe Queen D8. I don't know. You can you can see, you know, Black is going to get some chances, isn't he? Black's going to get some sort of punting chances against the king. I mean, you might win this way. You might win this way. But it's running an unnecessary risk. So you can gather from that that the move played in the game was uh, the 25-pointer. No, not that. What have I done? Yeah, it was F3. So if you played F3, you're on exactly the right track, 25 points. Now, I slightly prefer that to putting the queen on F3, because why would you want to blockade with the real queen? Surely you want to reserve the queen for some sort of uh, action rather than blockading, allows you to form with it. So I'm only going to give that 10 points, although it's a solid move. I'm guessing all other moves just invite Black to play F3, don't they? What have we got? We've got a Bishop D2. We've got a B3. Uh, we've got a Knight D5. Um, I'm pretty sure Black will play F3 against every single one of those moves. Um, I mean, on knight d5, I'm just wondering, can I actually take that and win another pawn? Yeah, but then you lose the pawn on the a file. That's true, and then he probably goes there again. And and tries to uh, bamboozle you. It's maybe, it's maybe winning. White's forces look scattered to me. They're all over the place, but of course you might just be winning. Um... All right, I'm going to give knight d5, 10, and the others, 5. Yeah. But the safest move here is, and the best move, is f3. So well done for playing that move, just to hold up any black attack. Right, on with the show. Black played bishop f6. And now white put the knight in on d5, interestingly. I think it's better now. Uh, so, yeah, you're on the right track. Um, Obviously, Black's got to take this pawn. And then Rook to D1 was played. Queen to C5, check. King to H1. D5. Okay, back to you. So has White misplayed this, or is this just... A a logical progression of the game. I mean, I doubt, I doubt Black's got enough for the exchange. But it's one of those positions that you could easily misplay because White hasn't coordinated his pieces yet. However, what do you think White did? <clears throat> Mm. 
not completely easy. Okay, please write down your move. Thank you. Here we go. Not totally easy. Right, so a lot of people like bishop d2. Uh, there's a b4 in the room. There's a bishop takes f4. Wow. Uh, rook takes f6 has been played by a couple of people. Well, more than one. Right, okay, so for, let's have a look at the game first. So the guy in the game played rook takes a6, so that gets 25 points, right? Just take the four off. Now, let's have a look at this interesting move, rook takes f6. Because that was my first thought when I looked at this position. Now, uh, who played that move? Quite a few strong players played that move. Uh, Colin Lyon was the first person I saw to play it. Um, would you like to take us through it then? Because it looks quite good, doesn't it? Uh, well, the thinking is, well, let's say you take with the knight. You play queen takes e5. Well, I think I have to take with the knight, don't I? If I take, I with, the rook, I, if I take with the rook, I just get murdered, though. Well, I, I certainly think it's better to take with the knight. It's more than that. I mean, everything's under attack here. Yeah, that's right. So I take with the knight. Hang on. Take with the knight. Uh one moment, let me go. Yeah, take the knight, yes. Then you play queen takes it e5. Yes, okay. And you solve the problem of your dark squared bishop because you're going to play bishop takes f4 probably next. Yeah, I was wondering what uh, I was wondering what black was going to do against this, I must admit. Um, I think I've got to try some. Yeah, it's really difficult. You're just threatening bishop takes f4, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, well, let me take a pawn. Let's take this pawn off, just let's say. Bishop takes f4, yeah? Yeah. And now I need a good move. However, I'm still a pawn up, right? Yeah. Black is a pawn up, but unfortunately, his king is very weak. Well, you're threatening bishop h6 next, aren't you? Well, I am and I'm not. So let me play queen d8. Well, I mean, white's got obvious compensation for the pawn. Queen. queen and you could also play bishop g5 here. Queen. Yeah, or queen e6, chat. Uh, well, uh, then I. Is there a point to that move? You're going to play bishop e5, are you? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Well, I'll put the rook in the way. Yeah, well, you, 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 you will, you will laugh because this, this happens in the game. Really? But I think, I think he finds a better moment to play it. Uh, he, he just, I mean, I'm not saying it's not good here. It probably is, but uh, he takes the pawn first because he doesn't think black can stop it. Now let's have a look before we go on. Let's have a look at some other moves then, because uh, obviously lots of people play rook takes a six. Well done. Now some people playing bishop takes f four. Uh, what that? Okay. So the point. What? what first of all, I'm going to take it. What's your? What's your point? Queen well, e six. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Somebody else. Queen e six and rook takes d five. Right, okay, obviously this is going to be dangerous. <clears throat> Queen d6, well, I, I've got to move my king here. So where's the safest square? Let's go in the corner first of all. Then no, we'll take d5. Yeah. 
Right. Now, uh, you're not threatening anything yet, are you? No. So what if I come in here to worry, yeah, worry, yeah. King? With the idea maybe well, it's difficult to play Bishop H4. I think you'd have to be 100% certain that this was winning because uh, it looks as though you've, you've really taken a risk here. Yeah. I don't know. Black's not threatening anything directly. Uh, it's not clear. It's, it's Black not clear threatening at all. Bishop D4. Well, well, first of all, what is White's move? I mean, let, let's make a move. Uh, the obvious move would happen to be that, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you not take the pawn on a6 and just win back the pawn that you're... Oh, I think I don't have time for that. I don't have time okay. for that, do I? I think he could probably play some move like bishop d4, can't he? True. But I might play that anyway. Even after rook b8. But after, after rook b8... Uh, bishop d4, now you can just take the knight off, can't you? Knight you won. No, sorry. You've got to um, take the bishop first. But yeah, if, yeah. If take I come here, take yeah. the bishop, yes, okay, then takes, take this. Yeah. Well, you know, this queen ending, what's this queen ending? It's not it's lost. It doesn't look lost. Let's have a look. No, I agree, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I don't think this is lost. I think, I think black is fine. There's going to be some perpetual check. Oh, you get the pawn on a6, but then your queen will be offside. And uh, I don't yeah. think Black's losing, is he? Yeah. But it's a nice idea. So I'm going to give it 15 points for creativity. Um, so back at the game, Rook takes a6 was played, and we'll take five minutes, as suggested by John Up. Is that all right? So it's nine o'clock. Uh, we'll just take five minutes to refresh and come back in five. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you. Did you give any points for Bishop D2 in the end or not? He's insistent, this guy. He's always got a move. He's always got a move. Right, just a minute. Some move. Bishop, okay. What's the point of that move? Well, it's going to be Bishop B4. It's pretty strong. Bishop B4, he says. Very strong. I'll go and get a cup of coffee then. <laughs> if you don't wait around, you won't get any points. <laughs> what about Rook takes Bishop, Andy? How many are you giving for that? Oh, I'm giving that 20. 20? Yeah. Uh, and, and the same question for B4, probably minus 20. But, uh... Oh, we're going to have to have a look at that then. Okay, so break, the break's going to have to be put on hold for a second. I'm still trying to work out what I do against this move. Did you play B4, Colin? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, shared lunacy with me. <laughs> huh. In for a shed load of negative <laughs> points, I think, Steve. <laughs> what do I do about that move? Not you wanted to activate the bishop, it activates it beautifully. I can't see anything wrong with it. 20 points. Thank you. And the last move is B4. Shared lunacy is the word. Yeah. Let's see if I remember the rules of chess. Oh, A5's on, isn't it? Well, well, Bishop A6, Bishop A3 anyway. He's making it up as he goes along. So, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, Andrew. I'm uh, hallucinating. I know it's getting late, Colin. I know it's getting late. But, you know. <laughs> totally negative yeah, points. You're ashamed to chat all your points on the bottom five. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I, I, I also play B4 with the idea of Bishop A3, but then I was thinking, oh, I can't play Bishop so, A3. Sorry, you know, probably... About, uh, well, how about queen takes a6? You'll make it up as you go along now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's my estimation. Well, it's clearly not as good as the other lines. It's not a good move. Well, mm. I don't say it's not a good move, but by comparison with some of the other moves, it's perhaps not quite as good. Well, how's that for uh, you know, a nice way of putting it? <laughs> oh, it's, not <laughs> minus very diplomatic. it's not minus 20. <laughs> It's not minus points. We give it five points for its beauty. <laughs> beauty, yeah. And it allows me to capture a ball on passant, which is always pleasurable. And White has just played rook takes a six. I'm playing yeah. play, 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 play. 
Wasn't Bishop B G two really just winning though? I mean, the fact of Bishop B four. Yeah, you have to understand this is a rapid game, and despite the fact these these guys are graded twenty three ninety eight and twenty five fifty seven, they missed things. I mean, maybe White had no time. Yeah. I mean, let's let's check it on the engine. We can cheat just a minute. I don't like it, but we can cheat quite easily. Bishop D two is the best move. There you are. Yeah, because look at seven fails, so Bishop takes F four. Somebody put the vacuum cleaner on in protest. Oh, uh, probably the. <laughs> That's a good way to disrupt the session. Isn't it? So Bishop D two. Okay, yeah. Well, there you go. That's the best move. Um, Rook takes A six was played. Um, knight to D six. And now this will be the last move we guess in this game because we've, we've got to get on to other things. And uh, so, what did White play here? Anybody turn your engine off? That's a good idea, actually. In fact, I won't. I won't. Uh, I'll, I'll give. I won't move in a minute. So White played Bishop takes F four. Very well spotted, Steve. Knight F five. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to you now. Yeah, Bishop takes F four. Obviously, if he takes it. Uh, Queen E6 check is very disruptive, not to say disastrous. So, um, yeah, turns out that black centre is not as strong as it looks. All right, last move to forecast because White wrapped this up quite quickly. Played it well. Okay, what have we got? You either see this or you don't. I'm sure most people will get this in the audience. Black's position is looking very shaky. <clears throat> right, let's have a look what we've got. Well, most people are playing the uh, best move here, uh, which, of course, is um, I'm going to leave Stephen Carr to explain it because he's, he's written it out quite nicely. Stephen, would you like to tell us what the move is? It, but the time for my computer is quite loud. Rook takes F6, Rook takes F6, Queen E5. Yes. And Rook D6 exactly fails to Queen E8. Rook D6 fails to Queen E8. Queen E8. Yes, it drops off. So D5 is falling. Um, White is so nicely centralised, surely he's doing okay. Doing okay, that's that's a bit pessimistic. He's killing <laughs> killing black. What's pessimistic when I play chess? <laughs> For a bit of experience. You're, you're being far too nice. <laughs> yeah, this is this is game over, isn't it? I mean, black is suddenly destroyed. Um, okay, so the game went on. Retreats, queen e6 check, little intermezzo. Uh, king came up, putting the king in a more vulnerable position. In came the rook. Uh, there was a small, um, a small move by the rook. Now, can anybody see the, the the last move of the game? You can tell me this move rather than put it in the chat. Who wants to tell me what the last move was? Not rook d seven, is it, Andy? Colin no, no. wants to play with rook d seven. No. No. Was it queen takes g six? Oh, you flash devil. <laughs> I don't know how good it is, though. <laughs> In a very loud voice, check. No, it wasn't. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> it's F5. Queen D7 check looks all right. Rookie 7? Queen D7. Yeah, then Rookie 7. 
Bishop H6. Wow, what's going on over there? Oh no, we've got King Tax. Yeah, I was saying oh, no, he's found the move. Too. Hooray! I've got you. Finally. <clears throat> Rook F5? No. Queen F5. No. Bishop E5? Oh. Queen F5, you lose. Rook E1. No, Rook E1. <laughs> oh. Bishop, Bishop E5? Losing. No. No, okay. Bishop E5, I start the key, victorious key march with King H6. Nobody's seen, nobody's seen the move. I can't believe this. In fact, it's quite a nice touch. Oh, Queenie. Five. Three ticks, Queenie five check. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I, I quite like that. That's a nice touch to finish the yeah, game. Yeah, it is. It is. That's, nice yeah. Cute. And of course, that wins hands down because you're winning all, your, all these pieces. So the Benko Gambit, okay, we spent we could spend the whole evening on that, but I'm not going to. Basically, it's a, a very uh, <coughs> recommendable opening. It's it's sound, and the biggest challenge comes when Black uh, Gambit decline. The decline variations are a bugbear for Black because you have to know a lot, and uh, it's very easy if you get onto a roll when the Benko Gambit accepted. But the Benko Gambit decline, well, different story. All right, now can anybody tell me which is the soundest Gambit? Possible that White can play. Queen's Gambit declined or accepted. Queen's Gambit, the Queen's Gambit. Now, the Queen's Gambit is not a Gambit at all, is it? Really? Because Black can always get the form back. Well, uh, the Evans Gambit, Andy. <clears throat> well, we we'll come to that later, Colin. If we, we're going to examine every Gambit, I could be here until next Tuesday. <laughs> and then my fees would start rising after 10 p.m. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> you receive twice the fee. <laughs> that's about three times the fee after 10 pm. That's very generous of you. Uh, okay, so now we come to, um, uh, yeah, okay. So, let, I'm sure some of you have seen this game before, but it is worth worth seeing. This is a, a game of the young Boris Spassky. So, of course, I have to share my screen. Here we are. This is, this is, um, this is what happens when the Queen's Gambit goes right. Now, Spassky's white and his poor opponent gets absolutely slaughtered in this game. But it starts life as the Queen's Gambit accepted. So there we are. Uh, curiously, when I show this to kids, that's the move they always come out with, first of all. And they say, well, why can't I just take the pawn? Well, OK, you can take the pawn, but it's most unwise for, for Black to try and hang on to the pawn. So Spassky played knight f3. Do you know why they do that? Why, why, why is that the main line as opposed to, say, knight c3 here? I mean, all these moves are playable. e4 is definitely a move, or e3 is a move. Why is knight f3 slightly more popular? Does anybody know? Stops e5. Yeah, it stops the free and break e5, um, which helps black in a lot of lines. Anyway, the guy played knight f6, and... Basically, Spassky trots down the main line. Now, what about B5 here? Because that's an ugly-looking move. But is, it, is it possible? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, do you know how to break this up? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Well, please enlighten us. Well, you can either play A4 or B3. Which one? Uh, well, let's go for A4. Actually, it does make a difference, Colin. Why does it? A4, all right. C6. Takes. Thank you very much for the bishop. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Take on B5. <laughs> oh, sorry. You'll have, very, you'll have to be very specific. <laughs> it's a bit late in the evening for me. Right, OK, I'll take that. B3. I suppose you think that's clever. Yeah. Right, A5. I, I just don't know anything about chess. I'll push my pawns. Well, you've got to take this pawn. Then I'll keep pushing. B4. Push, push pawns for England. What's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> this That's is the main <laughs> line, isn't it? This sort looks like line. the Abrams variation of Notobo, is. isn't it? Notobo, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All over I'm not sure it's the exact Notobo because actually Black hasn't played E6 yet. Yeah. I'm not sure whether that's better or worse for him. But certainly it, it, it's no not as stupid as it looks. In the spirit, though, isn't it? It's not as stupid as it looks. If you, funnily enough, you played B3 here, 
Uh, does that now? If I go a five here, it's not the same. This is not the same at all, is it? This is not the same. Can white can poke at that form with a three, can't he? Yeah. I would have thought this is better for white than the other variation. Yeah. So maybe b three is the most accurate. You wouldn't want to come across that variation on a dark night where you were out of form and you, you just so slightly misplayed it that you suddenly got these queenside pawns coming down your head. It's not as stupid as it looks. All right. So, of course, the guy didn't play that. He played uh, just the main line, which is e6. Spassky takes the pawn, c5. Queen, standard queen's gambit accepted. White castles, black plays a6. <clears throat> Explored in many world championship matches. I think between Petrosian and Botminik, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember that far back. They seem to debate this, uh, this like debating this opening. Anyway, White's got a choice now. Do you play A4 or not? Spassky played Queen E2. Black played B5, all very normal. And now White drops his bishop back here. Knight C6. I believe, actually, that Bishop B7 is... The main line. Anybody play the Queen's Gambit accepted here? I used to. There's nothing nothing wrong with it at all. Um, the main difference between this and the other line is that Black's going to put his knight on d7. Uh, that, that makes a bit of a difference. Knight c6, however, suspecting nothing. Knight c3 takes. Rook d1. Again, that's a very standard move with the Queen's Gambit uh, accepted. White gains a bit of time. Bishop b7, pawn takes pawn, knight b4. Okay, so. Right, well, what happened next? <clears throat> Black's Bishop gonna takes park. e6. Black's going to park a knight on d5 and challenge you to break him down. Oh, you can punt bishop takes e6 if you like. Uh, you're very welcome, but you have to give me more than one half move. Does d5 work? Well, uh, that's something you have to explain to me then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Please feel free to sacrifice all your pieces. All right, we'll have a little guess the next move on this one. We'll keep the scores rolling from the last example. What do you think White played here? Over to you. We've had bishop takes e6 from a sprightly Paul Sloan and d5. Who said that? It's me. Who's claiming that? Colin Perth is claiming it. No, somebody else said it, didn't they? All right, d5 is another move. Are, are there any other um, uh, other moves that White can consider? Bishop g5. Bishop g5, of course. All sensible moves. Takes b5. Knight takes b5. He's really gone for it. What if I take the pawn, take the knight? Oh, it's got bishop got covering e7. Bishop covering b4, 5. It's bishop's covering the knight, isn't it? Yeah, that's I'm, a shame. I'm sorry, that, that, that is uh, very unfortunate for your score. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I've just got to get my calculator out to work out how many points yeah. I've done. That's why you get the big numbers of the rating and I don't. <laughs> well, never mind. It's only a bit of fun. Right, OK, so let's have a look. So we've got Colin Line playing remarkably positionally here with pawn to A4. 
alongside him, Steve Harley. Okay, Steve, take us through A4. Why did you play A4 here? Um, break open those queenside pawns, and if he plays B takes A, then I've got Bishop coming in with a check on A4. Yeah, he didn't do that in the game, but I, I actually, you know, I think you know, think I'm um, pick up that pawn on B on B5. Looks pretty good. You see, Black's problem, of course, is that he can't castle. You know, he's too tempo tempy behind in, in terms of casting and. Therefore, white should be able to take the initiative because of that. Um, now then, the thing is, uh, how does black meet that move? It's very hard to see how black meets that move. Can you play bishop c6? You can play bishop c6. Then I guess white could then think about knight e5, can't he? Mm. I don't like this at all. It's quite ugly, doesn't it? Well, you see, it, it's it's actually this this happens so often in club chess, doesn't it? A person makes they know roughly what to do in the position, and then they make what they consider to be a natural move. That's totally natural, isn't it? You know, Black's going to sink a knight on d5 and then blockade the isolated form. But move he didn't play a4 in the game, probably because he couldn't resist what he did play. But that looks pretty strong. Anyway, that's worth twenty points in my book. Um, knight e5 was played by quite a few uh, well that's a standard uh, standard queen's gambit accepted move um, I think I'll just play bishop e7 against that unless you've got that was that the idea is that the idea it looks pretty strong it does look quite strong so I can't play bishop e7. Uh, therefore, I probably have to uh, play. You see how the, the problems Black's having in this position? He's getting into trouble in all these lines because he, he can't castle. That's why they put the knight on d7 rather than c6 because, you know, you get into trouble in a position like this. Uh, well, can I really get away with that? It looks really fishy. I might be able to survive. Anyway, that also looks good. I'll give that 20 points as well. Um, yeah, and the other move, of course, uh, Bishop G5 by Ken. Again, a very standard move. But I don't think it's quite as incisive as Knight E5, is it? Because no. now I think I can play that. If I can castle here, I, I should be all right. That'll just take us back into all these Petrosian Bok Vinny games. Um, the other way around, actually. Bishop G5 gets 10, but White did play, as you quite rightly say, a lot of you. Bang, he went in for D5. So if you play that, you get 25 points. A very unexpected move. Now, uh, quite a few people played that, didn't they? So let's have somebody to take us through it. Who who played it? Stephen played it. Anybody else claiming that move? Colin played it. Okay, Colin and Stephen Carr. Colin, go for it. Why did you play that move? I mean, I'm going to take it. Okay, so I take it. Okay. Um, I was, I hadn't quite made, made up my mind here, to be completely honest. Um, I, was look, I was looking at knight e5, which I think threatens knight takes b5. Um, and basically, by playing d5, <laughs> we've opened up the d file, obviously. Um, yeah, he's actually turned the queen's gambit into a gambit again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing I'd follow with uh, knight e5 here. Okay. Possibly a4. I don't, I, I, I was trying to make. Knight takes b5 work, but I'm not uh, convinced that it does. Now, now that we've taken that away, the bishop c6 defence. But um, yeah, I'm still not sure about it. So I'll, I'll say knight e5 here. Okay. Anybody see anything other than that? Yeah, I, I was. I was I'd suggest it as well. I'm looking at bishop g5 because he mm. was threatening then to take on f6 and then take on d5 and the pin on the 
on the um, E file wins a piece, and it's quite hard for. If you play Bishop A6, you take it and then take on D5. Yeah, well done. That's what Spassky played. Yeah. Uh, very difficult to meet this move. Black played here, and now the killer blow is that. Very simple move. And suddenly, Black is in terrible trouble. Because he can't take back with the knight or the bishop, which he wants to do. He's got to take back with the lousy pawn. Yeah. And now Spassky just completely demolishes him. He takes this knight. He takes the bishop. Look at that pawn structure. And he puts the knight on d4. It's utterly crushing. You know, in just a few moves, he's just been wiped out. And, of course, there are numerous threats which black cannot meet. So the game didn't last much longer. Um, went king f8. In came the knight. Oh, dear. H5. Why did he do that? What's white threatening, more or less? Queen H5. Threatening queen H5, so it's got to be stopped. And then took that. Queen takes. Queen takes. King G8. Queen F6. There were no more moves. That's the Queen's Gambit in action. Who would believe that actually, <clears throat> back here, it could all dis disintegrate so quickly? But actually, the Queen's Gambit is, of course, safe as houses, classical opening. And this was a particularly good example of how Black could be demolished. If I mean, he didn't play too badly, but uh, that was completely crushing, wasn't it? And the difficult move to see, of course, is Bishop G5, I think. I think that's quite tough to see beforehand. But, sorry, Andrew, can you just explain why he didn't, uh, um, just two moves on, he couldn't be take the knight with the bishop? Right, yeah, sure. Three. This one, take the knight, take yeah. the bishop. We can just take this knight, I think, for three, because it's pinned, the pawn's pinned. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it just so, fell apart so quickly, didn't it? Fell apart. Mm. Right, okay, so that was the Queen's Gambit. Shouldn't detain us. What have we got here? We can have a King's Gambit, if you like. A Mora Gambit. Yeah, that's all that's left. What would you like? King's Gambit or a Mora Gambit? King's Gambit. King's. King's oh, Gambit. I, I love the Mora Gambit. <laughs> right, it's going to be a King's Gambit. I want to get rid of this. <clears throat> Flip the board. This game is a good reason why black should, uh, why white should not play the king's gambit against Mickey Adams. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very bad idea. This was played in the British Championship in 2010. Bob <laughs> Eames. Anybody heard of Bob Eames? Yeah. Well, should you yeah. play against Mickey Adams, by the way? <laughs> hmm? Or should you play against Mickey Adams? <laughs> well, obviously, you've just got to play as you normally play. Eames does play the King's Gambit, so he just sticks with it, you know. And um, it's just difficult to play against somebody who is so good. <laughs> so, E4, E5, here we are, Colin, King's Gambit. You must be the King's Gambit expert in the audience. What, what do you recommend here? Uh, taking it. I wouldn't even think about playing any other move here. You know, funnily enough, that's exactly what Mickey Adams did. <laughs> But, yeah. And now we've got a fundamental choice. Should we play knight f3 or should we play bishop c4? Knight f3. Bishop c4 is best. Best? Yeah. Knight f3 is definitely bad. Bad? <laughs> yeah, after g5. Back's already close to winning. Knight f3, g5. Have you not seen the DVD by Danny King? On this, 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 uh, what's he recommend then? Knight c3, bishop g7. I've, I've noticed one okay. thing with you the slower you say something, the more menacing it is. You know, if, he's, <laughs> if he rushes it, he goes bishop g7, you know, he's bluffing, but if it's bishop g7, he's got it all worked out. You know, he's wait, wait, wait to kill you. Yeah, well, I, I don't know, I don't know anything about this. I suppose white goes there, doesn't he? 
D6 or H6 can play either. Why can't you play G4 and take my knight? I want to play the Musio Gambit or something. No, that's what he wants you to do. <laughs> well, anyway, this didn't happen. So White did take your advice and play Bishop C4. And now, will you be tempted into playing Queen H4 check is the question. No. <laughs> Anybody else play uh, the black side of this in the audience? I always like to play um, bishop e7 whenever I get the opportunity here and then bring it over to h4 and I get a surprising number of uh, good positions out of it. Well, let, let's give this a little road test. I'm in a reckless mood. What do you do? Yeah, I just uh, I, I always stick the bishop on h4 and people tend oh, to take it. I'm in a reckless mood. <laughs> it's easy to sack. Please take my pawn. Yeah, King h yeah, is probably better. I'll, I'll have that. Oh, here we go. Bishop F7 is coming. <laughs> Another one? Another one? Yeah, yeah, I'd have that one. Yeah. Little Jack Horner sits in the corner. <laughs> well, you might meet some maniac who tries this. <laughs> right? It looks okay to me. It looks like plenty of conversation. What's the situation? You're, you're only three pawns up after all. Well, I'll give one back with D5. That's cheating. Mm. Okay, take it. Uh, bishop e6. Knight f6. Knight f6. Oh, he's got, actually, he's going to lose a piece, isn't he? Not necessarily. No, that's right. He doesn't lose a piece. Knight f6. Okay, you, you, this didn't Probably. happen or anything like it. You can see the type of mayhem the King's Gambit can, uh, can yeah. promote. And the thing is, if you like this type of chess, it's, it's, it's all about what your attitude to risk is, isn't it? Yeah. Some players uh, play chess for fun and they've got very, uh, they don't care about risk. They just play these openings for the pure pleasure of playing. Them. So if that's you, you know, you can, you can risk these openings. Fine. Uh, professional level is probably quite unwise because they've got Stockfish 13 running in the background and they're just sitting down at the board wait, waiting to repeat all the moves the 3600 engine has just told them to play. So it might not be such a great idea against, against them, but um yeah, okay, bishop c4. Mickey just keeps it solid. He plays d5. Right, good move. Yeah, I've always had a yeah a liking for that move. I think it's very straightforward. It's classical anti-gambit strategy. You don't keep what you've gained. You just give back the pawn to get a decent position. And Eames took with a bishop, knight f6. And already you see White's got to probably surrender that bishop. So he played knight f3, back took the bishop, and then knight c3. This is the idea. Castles. All right, let's try and let's try and forecast Mickey's moves. So what, what would you play if you were black here? Let's see if you can understand how he thinks. So Eames has insisted on sacrificing a pawn. And it's generally thought that you need three moves to compensate you for a pawn in the opening. So has he got three moves? He probably has. He's castled and he's got both knights out. So he probably, using the normal yardstick, has got just about enough for the pawn. OK, so what, what do you think Black played? <clears throat> Remember, Adams is not going to be hanging on to that pawn, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary. He's trying to get a good position. He's got two bishops. That's a good factor in the position. But can he get castle? What do you think he did? Let's see if you can play as well as Mickey Adams. There may be a variety of moves here coming coming up. <clears throat> I think I know what I would play, but... Uh... Might not be the move you play. Let's see. Uh, 
Uh, Richard Brown, you put Bishop D4 there. Do you mean Bishop D6? Where's Richard? Um, you put Bishop D4 down. Do you mean Bishop D6? No, I think that, I is that the move you want to play? That's, that, that, that's it. Oh, sorry. I meant, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant B4. Oh, Bishop B4. Okay, right. Bishop B4. Right. Fine. Yes. Yeah, no, yes. No worries. No worries. Right. Okay. So let's have a look. We've got a wide selection move, mostly developing moves. Knight C6, Bishop D6, Bishop E7, Bishop B4, and Bishop E6. Right. Well, Mickey played um, Knight C6. 25 points for that. Congratulations. Now, uh, would somebody like to explain why they think that is the best move, as opposed to, for instance, moving this bishop? And then followed by castling, because that looks entirely logical, doesn't it? So why does he choose knight here? So let's have a look. Who played this? Uh, Paul Sloan, what, why did you play that? I think it is the best move. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's preparing bishop e7. And also, it is um, uh, putting pressure on the d4 square. Uh, yes. Uh, well, for instance, let's let's compare it with this move. Well, it, if you play that, he can play uh, rook e1 and follow a bit by d4, can't he? Or possibly d4 straight away. d4 straight away, yeah. The bishop's slightly misplaced on e6, isn't it? You don't quite know where you want to put that bishop just yet. It's a similar thing to, to this bishop. <clears throat> um, where does we, where do we want that bishop? Now, you could do this. You could do this perfectly well. You could do this perfectly well. Or bishop, even bishop b4. I mean, I presume you're going to answer some sort of check with bishop e6. Is that right? If he goes check, you're going to yeah. play this move. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Castles. I mean, it, even, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, even this looks okay for black, doesn't it? Did you not uh, take the knight first just to slightly mess up his pawn structure before castling? You, you could do. You could certainly do that. Of course, that does allow the bishop to come to a3 uh, if, it, if it needs to. Uh, all right, <clears throat> we're gonna, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put the engine on and see what it thinks, see if it agrees with Mickey Adams. But... Um, Knight c6, I think, prepares to move a bishop. But where? You're not quite sure. You're keeping your options open. And this is what I think Mickey likes to do in his games. He likes to keep his options open as much as possible. So let's have a look, quick look at the engine. Ret retract that move. There we are, unerringly, knight c6, but bishop e6 is also good. Bishop e7 looks good. What does it think of bishop d6? Also good. And bishop b4 was the final one. Doesn't like that so much. So what it basically means is that uh, actually White's position here is, is not that great. Objectively, you know, it's already not that great. So, you know, you play the King's Gambit if you like a risky, uh, risky game. Knight c6 is just a nice solid move. However, all the other moves seem fine. Uh, so I'm gonna, I've got to give them 20 points. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Bishop b4, slightly less, only 15 for that. But again, it, it's okay. Doesn't seem as though black can go wrong. Well, anyway, white played d4. <clears throat> now then, is white disrupting black with the threat of d5? This is the question, isn't it? Bishop e6, obviously he doesn't think so. And now white starts to faff around a bit, really. <clears throat> I think he's slightly taken aback by what's happened in the opening. I mean, uh, 
doesn't feel he's got anything. So starts to play some fishy moves. I mean, for a keen scamper tier, this, this does look a bit fishy. Why does he do that, for instance? What would Black play after that? Welcome to say. Castle Queenside. Yeah, I think that's got to be the intention, hasn't it? And then I believe that the pawn is dropping. The pawn's just dropping, isn't it? That's why he didn't do that. But without that move, then he's forced to play a move like that. And now back to you for Vicky's next move. <clears throat> it basically takes white too long in this game to get organized you know you don't play the king's gambit to start playing moves like 92 really but of course you've got to deal with that move <clears throat> Seven. Don't forget to um, drop your move in the chat rather than say it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's see if you can play as well as Mickey Adams. There seem to be a number of uh, decent moves here. I guess but White's going to play. He's going to take with the knight or the bishop on f4 if allowed. <clears throat> That's quite a tough one. Probably take with a knight, actually. Maybe not. Okay, so what are you going to play here? Let's see what you come up with. Spend a little bit longer on this because it's a, it's not totally easy. Right, okay, let's have a go. Try and have a go, even if you, you know, find it difficult, because, uh, well, we learn from our mistakes. Right, let's see what we've got, shall we? Right, so, um, Gordon would approve. The vast majority of players are going for G5. Ken's played bishop d6, quite a few bishop d6s, and there's a castles on the queen side. And there's a bishop c4, and that's it. Right, now let's have uh, the majority have gone for g5. Uh, Harry Duff, is he around? Let's have a look. Where's Harry? Would you like to explain why you went g5? Um yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yes, absolutely. Go for oh, it. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, it's, I wanted to defend f4, and I'm going to follow up with bishop, bishop g7 to hit, hit d4, and maybe play g4. Um, but it just, it just seemed a more aggressive way of defending um, my pawn on f4 than bishop d6 or anything else. Well, it's not only uh, defence, it's, it's aggression as well, isn't it? So because, yes, uh, yeah. yeah. Castles on the queen side and bishop g7 looks like a good plan here, followed by some sort of advance against the white king. Does look like a very good move and well explained. Uh, other moves, uh, casting on the queen side, um, can't be anything wrong with that. I suppose the only thing I would say is that that doesn't, Stop White from taking the pawn back, does it? So let me see. Shall I take? I'm going to take with the bishop for sure. Get some pieces out. Okay. Um, take with the rook or take with the knight? You can't. He's got too many pieces covering this square. Mm. Well, I mean, this looks a roughly level game, doesn't it? Uh, I think White's okay if he gets his pawn back. 
Uh, what else have we got? Bishop d6 from Ken. <clears throat> okay, keeps the pawn. Uh, what should I do? I think I'm going to play b3 against that. Followed by c4. And argue that your bishop, I mean, you're going to, what, you're going to castle king side or queen side? Wake King's up, side. Ken. Wake up. <laughs> King's side. King's side. Okay, well, let's get on with the job. You're on mute, Ken. Yeah, he's deliberately on mute, I would say. Yeah. He's in that, like, a <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> now we play Rook D8. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this could be, this could be, this could be fine for, uh, for black, of course. Um, I don't know. I, I, how awkward is that? I don't know. It's. I know I'm not winning anything. I'm not going to win anything, but I'm trying to make life difficult for you. Well, let's compare this with the game, right? That's all I would yeah. say. Let's compare this with the game. Because we go back, and uh, what did Mickey play? G5, congratulations to those who played G5. 25 points. You're on the right track. Bishop D6 gets 10. Castles on the queen side gets 10. That's just a really good move. I think it refutes why it's opening. For all the reasons Harry described. Um White's got to find a way of just stopping Black from getting on with this development plan. Bishop to G7, castles on the queen side. And then, you know, the attack flows. I mean, you could even try H5 after that couldn't you? and go for the full-on pawn stall. So White has got to really uh, come up with something good. He did play this B3 moves, a uh, move, sorry. Bishop B2, that's already a little bit artificial. Bishop G7. White went C4. So, okay. Uh, players proceeded. Now what? <clears throat> Quite an interesting position, actually. Um, you have to like black. Pawn up two bishops. Possible pawn storm against the king. But white's got the centre. So there's always hope. <clears throat> I'm not sure the centre is going anywhere. That's the problem. Is it time to put the boot in on the white king, maybe? Or has black got other moves to build up? Does he need to build up anymore? Is it just not... The time to seek the attack. We've got some interesting attacking moves being suggested. G4 has been suggested. H5 has been suggested. Knight E5, tactical move. Just Rook H8, centralising the pieces. Must be sensible. There's yeah. some Knight B4s in the audience. They want to create mayhem on C2 and then E3. That's... Not of night B4s. <laughs> right, has everybody voted? Or would you like a little bit more time? Yeah. Some good suggestions this time. Okay, so it's either it's either it looks like it's a toss up between uh, the king side pawn storm or a, a tricky knight move. So let's have a look what Adams played first. Mickey doesn't play for tricks unless it's absolutely necessary. He played g4. So twenty five points for if 
but if you play g4, that's a good move. But let's have a look at some other moves here. Now, h5, the reason he probably doesn't do that, he doesn't feel it's necessary. He can do without it. Uh, on the other hand, what does white play? It's hard to see, hard to see good moves. Uh, well, I don't know. The best I can come up with some move, move like that. A strange looking move, but uh, I might have some might have some tricks based upon this move of playing d five. I think if g4 is a, a strong move, it should be played straight away. There's no doubt about it. h5 is, is just giving him a tempo. Now, let's have a look at knight b4. That's an interesting move indeed. Oh, gosh. I don't like white's position here at all. So what's the primary threat? Is it knight d3 or knight c2? Probably knight c2. Knight c2. This position just looks so bad. Uh Anybody see a move? I'm struggling to see a move here. Uh, rook c1. Rook c1. Then he goes knight d3. Knight d3. Well, you might be able to grovel your way out of it. Uh, but it's not in rook c2. I mean, it's not inspiring, is it? Knight takes followed by c5. Well, then rook d2. Is it, is it, is it all over? I don't know. Hasn't he got to go knight e one. Well, hang on. Which position? Sorry, sorry. Back, back, back. Here. Ninety-one. No, 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 no. Sorry, back. No, this is this is no night B four. Ninety-one. That's right, isn't it? Before then. Well, hang yeah. on a minute. Now, it, it, it's Black's move. It's Black's move, isn't it? White's just played C four, and we're we're looking at night B four. 91. 91 does defend against the threats, for sure. Queen e4. Well, I, I was also thinking of c5. <coughs> I mean, uh, this is the pressure's starting to build, isn't it? <laughs> I don't like, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Can, can you get away oh, with pleasant. something like this? I don't know. It's probably not. A3, yeah. Pressure's just building all the time. So knight b4 does look very strong. Again, we'll just run the engine on it afterwards. Uh, rook h, e8. How many points? Well, I haven't finished yet. Let's let's have a look at the other move first. Let's just have a look at it. Because this, this also looks good. I don't see anything wrong with that move. Maybe I've got to play queen, queen b1. That's not good, is it? Okay, so yeah, so queen b, uh, this this looks looks very good. Okay, let's turn the engine on, have a look and before we mark it up. Hmm. <clears throat> There you go. It shows Mickey's unerring instinct for the game of chess. Uh, does it? Or Rook H8 is King B8. Nobody got that move. Uh. Stockfish is giving G4. Deep Fritz is giving... Oh, G4. Minus 5 by Stockfish. That looks like the over, overwhelming favourite. So that fully deserves 25 points. Then he's got Rook H, G8 and Rook H, E8. Let's have a look at Knight B4. What does it say after that? Damage limitation with queen d2. And then if knight c2, rook a c1, knight e3, just to try and defend the position. And then black should play here and go for the attack. G4 now, quite strong. White's well, move. White's move. White's move. Have you got yeah, knight? okay, so that's another line. Uh, what else was suggested? Oh, it's was H5, wasn't it? H4. 
If you're down to H4, then. <laughs> Thing, things are grim. <laughs> 95. Oh, gosh. Wild and woolly. Wild and woolly. Eh? What is this? What is it? It's 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 uh it's a computer line, that's what it is. Yeah. And black's advantage is increasing. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I think all your moves are pretty good. I like not, I like I'm gonna give him all 20 points apart from G4, which gets 25 points. So I think that's the human move. For me, that's the human move. You just go for it. No faffing around with other moves. If that's good, then it should be played. White goes back, and now in we go. Mickey plays F3. We'll turn the engine off here. And now, you know, this is not much of an advert for the King's Gambit, is it? No. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that at lower levels, you could get away with the King's Gambit, not a problem. But nowadays, it's very tough to play the King's Gambit against somebody really strong. I mean, what has Black done here that's so so difficult? He's just developed his pieces, hasn't he? Might never got the form back. And now, he really is suffering. That's a really nice move. Would you find that move at the board? Which is the book opposite the king. Easy move, surely. Pardon? Easy move. the book opposite the king. That's an easy move. Well, okay. Yeah. If you find it easy, then great. Right. It's just hack. <laughs> For me, that's not totally easy to play, but somehow oh, you're right, of course. It is it is hacking away at the king. He played F4, having already played it on move two. Uh, what horrible position this is. G3, another splendid move by Mickey Adams. Knight F3. Okay, why is, what happens if he takes the ball? <clears throat> Anybody see? Queen H3. Uh, is there something better than that? Although Queen H3 does look strong. A bishop, D, a bishop D4. Yeah. Bishop D4 check. Well, I'm just wondering, is it knight takes D4? Is it bishop takes D4? Is it queen H3? Well, you know, all of those moves look good. But which is the best? Obviously, if you take on D4, you've got to have worked it all out. A lot of people think, should he take? I mean, uh, in a way, there's not really a rush here, is there? But uh, which is best, Queen H3 or the sacrifice? <clears throat> Knight takes D4 just wins. Uh, okay, well, Knight takes D4. Let's say I take with the bishop. Bishop uh, takes check. Knight takes. Rook takes pawn check. Yeah. King F2. Queen to h3. You can take on f4 in that position. Yeah, queen f4 check. Queen takes then f4 go, check. Yes, then I go knight e f3. Oh, yeah. Bishop g4. I'm waiting for you to finish me off. Rook takes d4. Correct. That is quite painful. Let's see this. Knight takes d4. Well, what's he going to take with? Doesn't really matter. Takes, takes, check. Must play king f2 or his mate on h3. Takes, knight, yeah. Takes. Yeah. 
Devastating. Oh, mate. Yeah, that's about what it deserves. White's position. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Adams would have calculated that all before he played G3. You know, no doubt about that whatsoever. So, let's see what happens. Took this, took this, took this, and look at that. <laughs> that was that was checkmate. Right, okay, so that brings us to a conclusion. I can't I could go on, but I, I won't. So let's see who won the competition. If you add up your points, if anybody was taking this seriously and put your points in the chat, let's see who won. I'm sorry I wasn't able to cover too many gambits, but we've only got two hours. I mean, we could we could have gone on, but uh, a glass of wine is beckoning. <laughs> right, so, okay, Steve Harley's 150, oh Mark Payne 175, fantastic. I've got 175, but my chat's not working. Okay. Uh, 175 puts you in first equal place at the moment. Why is my chat not working? Oh, it's over there. Your chat doesn't want you to win competition. Well, my points exceed my dream. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody claiming more than 175? If there's a 176 in the audience, I shall want the stewards inquiry. <laughs> you have any FIDE arbiters on the call? <laughs> we might we might well have. If we, how many arbiters have we got? We've got Ken, I know that. Anybody else? Do you want to as an arbiter? Um, Tony Williams, 170. Terrific score. No, it looks like... And, and Colin wins the 175 on tie break. Well done, Colin. Do you know what your prize is? Well... You have to deliver next week's lecture. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Just, just a side <laughs> issue. You know, um, do you know about John Shaw's book on the King's Gambit, Andy? I've got it about two, two feet away from me on the bookcase. Yes. Right. Him and Simon Williams recommend three knight c six against Bishop c four. <laughs> Look, you, you haven't got a book on the King's Gambit until you've got this. Well, which one is this? Oh, I'm look, at, look at that thickness there. Never mind the quality. Feel the width. <laughs> The Fisher King's Gambit by Timothy Taylor. No, now, that, cost me, that. that cost me ninety-nine dollars. <laughs> it was a, li a limited edition book. And I don't know That's... whether it's his girlfriend on the front or, or, or a wife. I don't know. God knows. It's got a picture of a woman on the front, which probably yeah. has nothing whatsoever to do with the King's Gambit. What's that got to do with it? It's one of the best books on the King's Gambit I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, Anyway, Colin, there, there you are, you see. That, that trumps John Shaw's in terms of... I haven't seen that one. No, no. It's only a very limited edition. Tony Williams yeah. would probably know something about this. Is it available in Britain, though? I, I bought it directly from the owner. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that one at all. There you are. That's one I've seen is John Shaw's. Not going on sale, that. Staying in my bookshelf. Right, OK. Well, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And... It was a pleasure uh, meeting you all and uh, doing this lecture for Cambly Chess Club. So thank you very much. And um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No need to applaud. No need to applaud. I'm not giving that King's Gambit book away. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's it, guys. I'm going off for a glass of wine. So I um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you soon. All right. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Andrew. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.